Hello everyone. So today's uh, video is about uh, analyzing the performance or response of a filter, a passive filter. Um, so in this specific uh, filter, we have uh, three components, one resistor and two uh, reactive components, one inductor and one capacitor, and connected in this specific way. Uh, and everything starts by calculating the output over input transfer function of the sector of, of this circuit. So uh, we the first thing that we need to calculate is Vs, which is V out S over V I S. Uh, so you can obviously do this through simple uh, circuit analysis by labeling the circuit and writing equations for components and all that but this uh, at this point we can actually start doing shortcuts and just use a voltage divider equation to uh, simplify the process so this would be equal to ls in parallel with 1 over cs divided by r plus ls in parallel with 1 over cs um, so let's first calculate what LS in parallel with uh, 1 over CS is. So that would be LS times 1 over CS over LS plus 1 over CS. And that is going to be LS divided by 1 plus LCS2. So now we put that in this equation. So LS over 1 plus LCS2 divided by R plus the same thing. LS over 1 plus LCS2. And that results in LS over R L C S two plus L S plus R. Um, so this is the transfer function. Now, if we want to know how this uh, uh, filter changes the input, uh, as we as we discussed once you apply an input that is in the form of a cosine so assuming let me write this in a different color so assuming that vi is an a cosine of omega t then you can mathematically prove that v out is equal to a times uh, the magnitude of hj omega cosine of omega t plus phase of hj omega so in other words we have to at this point evaluate the magnitude and phase of hj omega in order to understand how this uh, circuit or in this fil uh, this filter changes the amplitude and the phase of the input uh, as you can obviously see uh, this is going to be a function of frequency basically this is a frequency selective components so now h j omega is equal to l omega j divided by now this omega j to the power of 2 would be omega to the power of 2 j to the power of 2 and that's minus 1 right so this would be r minus r L C Omega two plus L Omega J. So now I can calculate both the magnitude and the phase of this. So the magnitude of H J Omega at this point would be the magnitude of the numerator, which is L Omega divided by the magnitude of the denominator, which is the square root of the real component to the power of 2 so that would be r minus r l c omega 2 
to the power of 2 plus the imaginary to the power of 2 which is L2 omega 2 and then the phase of HJ omega would be the phase of the numerator which is pi over 2 minus the phase of denominator which is tangent inverse of uh, the imaginary which is L omega divided by the real component R minus R L C omega to the power of 2. So now if you want to kind of see how this H a omega behaves as a function of frequency we can start by looking at the two extreme values uh, if you set equal uh, omega equal to zero um, so the bottom is going to be something this, these two components are going to go away r2 comes out of this and becomes r but the numerator is already zero so h a omega for uh, zero frequency is basically zero now if omega approaches infinity again we can see that between these two components this one has a order of four so with respect to this one you can completely ignore the other one this comes out and becomes order of two again because it's an order of four comes out becomes order of two uh, then uh, numerator is order of one order of one denominator is order of two so at infinity you have one over omega basically the order becomes zero over order of one which means zero because omega is approaching infinity so basically what that tells you is that omega starts from zero for low frequencies ends up at zero for high frequencies and obviously in the middle uh, it has to basically go up and then come back again uh, so this from that if i just show you generally is a general characteristic of the filter hj omega magnitude of hj omega as a function of uh, frequency it's basically a bandpass filter uh, now uh, center frequency is where this is maximum now if you want to know what the, where that maximum is uh, just uh, mathematically speaking you have to take this function take the derivative with respect to omega equate that to zero that gives you uh, where this function becomes ma maximum at what omega and then from that you can actually calculate the actual maximum whatever that is but if you uh, in this specific case uh, there's a shortcut you can basically kind of estimate what uh, the maximum is and what the omega uh, for that maximum is if you set omega is uh, equal to a school root of uh, 1 over uh, lc then omega to the power of 2 becomes 1 over lc the two go away and you get r minus r0 for this one and then here the same thing happens but this time you get a square root of l over c for this whole thing you put it here you're going to get the same thing in the numerator so you get square root of one over uh, square root of l over c in the numerator square root of l over c in the denominator so that becomes one in other words h j omega for omega equal to square root of one over lc is actually one and obviously the transfer function can't be anything larger than one um, the best that you can have is the output to be equal to the input so this is obviously your maximum so this maximum for the circuit actually happens to be one and that happens at the frequency of one over a square root of lc again we discussed this um, very uh, briefly uh, if you take uh, the impedance associated with the inductor and put it in parallel with the impedance associated with the capacitor at so let's actually do that so to visualize it so uh, l omega j in parallel with 
1 over c omega j. These, this is what we're calculating, right? So this would be L omega j divided by c omega j over L omega j plus c omega j, right? Plus 1 over c, sorry. Plus uh, 1 over c omega j. So now these omegas go away, the j's go away. So you get L over c in the numerator and in the denominator you get 1 plus uh, L c omega 2 and then j to the power of 2 which is minus so let me back up a little bit so it would be one they would be l omega j over one plus l c omega two j to the power of two which is minus l c omega two so minus l c omega two so this would be the impedance associated with the, an inductor with a capacitor in parallel to each other. Now, if you set omega equal to a screw root of uh, 1 over LC, like what we have here, this term becomes 1, so the impedance becomes something divided by 1 minus 1, which is 0, becomes infinity. In other words, again, LC becomes an open circuit at that point. So an open circuit, which is gone, the two in parallel to each other is something that basically doesn't do anything. It's an open circuit with the impedance of infinity. So you only have a resistor at that point, that specific point, which is VI and V out at that point are equal to each other. So that's your uh, center frequency that gives you the maximum, uh, which happens to be one for this specific case. So let me clear that and then we finally do calculate the bandwidth. So for the bandwidth, as we said, uh, we're going to define the cutoff frequencies. The way that we do that is by calculating Hj magnitude of Hj omega c becoming the maximum, which is 1, divided by square root of 2. So I put omega c here in this equation and then equate that to 1 over square root of 2. So L omega c divided by square root of r minus r L c omega c to the power of 2, the whole thing to the power of 2 plus L2 omega c to the power of 2 has to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 and then you solve this and you're going to get several solutions but there are only two that are positive and th this is actually going to give you four values two are positive and two negative obviously the negative values are not acceptable you take two positive ones and those would be basically these two values right here when the value of this Hj omega is 1 over a square root of 2 so you get an omega c1 right here and an omega c2 right there and then you can define your bandwidth as omega c2 this was omega c2 omega c2 minus omega c1 and then if you're asked to calculate the Q, the quality factor of the filter, this is actually the center frequency omega C divided by the bandwidth. So with that, you get the quality factor of the filter and you're done calculating any, everything about the circuit. Now obviously you have to put values in all these equations if the question has given you values, but I always suggest that when you do the calculations, you start with the general RLC values to get these equations, and once you get them, then put the values, because normally these values are in a macro and pico, and, and working with those 
kind of small numbers are not convenient. Hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for your attention.